Did you get a chance to go to church today? Today was my day to go to church. <laughs> and I loved it. <laughs> it was a trip. I loved it. It was great. Man, you know. Sometimes, you know, church is just so good, you just think it can't get any better. And then it does. I was uh, really kind of excited to go, you know, but also amused in a lot of ways that wasn't negative but positive. You see, sometimes you can be enjoying it so much you just you laugh. You think it's funny, you know, some of the things that you're learning or that you're experiencing, you're going through. As a matter of fact, whenever I think about church, I think about these guys. Have you ever met these guys? These are my buddies. I count on these guys, you know, to keep me sane, you know, because any time that I get, you know, so serious that I really need a reminder. Oops, he's not talking. Then I have to go to his buddy, you know, who holds him up. You know, and that's my idea. You want to have some fun? <laughs> go to church. I mean, that's the way I felt. It was so cool. I mean, you know, I don't always go necessarily only, you know, like for worship. I mean, worship's good, but you see, I kind of got spoiled when I was growing up. I, I kind of grew up with like Maranatha Music and Tommy Coons, you know, and Benny Hester would come tripping by or Ernie and Rotino or whoever it might be, you know, I mean. You never knew who might be sharing music, you know, on a Sunday morning. Denny Carell, you know, all kinds of people that were like, wow, in those days when it came to Christian music. And so it was always interesting, even though we would always sing like a hymn, you know, and I'm not big on hymns, and I'm certainly not a big enjoyment of uh, organ music, so kind of don't go there too much. Matter of fact, you can kind of hear some of the music in the background over here, you know, it's like my neighbors are getting a little carried away with their music. But... You know, it's also, I don't go to church necessarily only, you know, for like to see or to be a part of, you know, some experience, you know, kind of like the stage things, you know, how they got their special lights and special auras and all that. And I don't really feel that, you know, kind of feeling kind of thing when I go to church, you know, though it does happen every now and then. You know, I don't go just to, you know, really get a word, you know, because God speaks to me all the time. I don't, you know, really have a problem with God speaking to me. <laughs> it's kind of like, it won't shut up. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I mean, I'm maybe I'm one of those kinds of people that needs to be told all the time what to do, where to go, how to be, and what to say, and how to be, and how to live it, how to get it, and where to be it from, and all that good stuff. But, you know, I go to church because I enjoy it. I, I feel the fullness of joy, you know, it's like the pastor was talking about, you know, in a different context, but you know, I, I, I kind of get a kick out of it. I, I like it, you know. I tried it. I liked it. My name's Mikey. <laughs> but at this church, I've never quite been so much having fun at it as I've gone to lots of churches, and I've been able to worship anywhere I go, and God's always spoken to me to any church I've been to, you know, and I've been to some pretty strange churches. God's always used them in some way to teach me something or to apply to my life. But you know, it was really nice to be able to sit down and have, you know, pretty good worship. I'm not going to say it's the greatest or the worst. It's just pretty good. It's its own style. Or to have, you know, like the setting, you know, and I've been in mega churches and mini churches and tents and cathedrals and whatever you want to call them. And I've been in Jerusalem. I've been all over the place and different places sometimes in the world. And all of them had their own little benefits, you know. Bennies and kind of different things, you know, and that's funny, I was just thinking of Alaska and the pastor mentioned something about the northern lights and I was going, <laughs> I got a whole kick out of his perspective on on the narrow band of what we can see, you know, and I keep thinking, amen to that brother, man, wait till heaven opens up and we can see all that. But the beauty of what I found wasn't so much about the message the person, the worship, the word, the building, the structure, the people, or any of those other superficial things, I found Jesus. Shh, don't tell anybody. Jesus was there. Where, 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 where? He was there. No, you know, I mean, Jesus in you and Jesus in me, but you know, I mean, it, you, you, you kind of got to get this handle on what I'm saying here now. You know, you got to understand. 
I've seen a lot of pastors, and I know when a pastor is like pastoring, and when a pastor is like, you know, God is speaking. Sometimes God is speaking through the person. Sometimes the person is left so far behind what the Lord is doing that you no longer see the pastor, but you see the Lord. It's Jesus. Guess what? The pastor is gone. Ha! Jesus is here. And it's cool. And then, you know, the pastor shows up and he does his own little stories. But, you know, hey, it was great, you know, because that's what God can do when God comes through a person. He can take over and take the place of the person who's there. Now, they may admit it or not, you know, depending upon their own ego or lack thereof. And sometimes they'll, you know, take credit or not, you know, for their message that they've either prepared or not or been inspired or not, you know, by the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit works severally as He chooses, you know, the way and directions and means that He plans to. But between you and I, I know. Jesus was there. <laughs> now, I'm sure there's other people that probably felt like, ah, same old message or same old sermon or something. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they all got blessed. But for me, I was so thrilled to go to church, to enjoy fellowship with my Father in heaven, to experience His heart. While I do notice, you know, people around, I feel more the presence of God there, you know, and not just in church, but I mean, wherever I go, but more like how God is there if we were aware of Him being there, you know, filling in the blanks of where there are people sitting distant from each other or not touching each other. You know, there are even people there that weren't saved. I know that, because you can tell kind of people that aren't saved because they can't wait to get out. And some of the Christians can't wait to get out. <laughs> they got something else to do, you know, something better to be, someplace else to do, something else to be. But it was so nice because it was like, I got a chance today to kind of stop for a while, you know, and visit with my wife. Now, I am married, you know, okay, you know, and I live with my wife, you know, I mean, okay, you know, but I don't visit with my wife, you know, we don't really kind of see eye to eye on everything, you know, we kind of live with each other, and you, when you live with somebody, you know, you, you treat them like a roommate, you know, and you deal with their idiosyncrasies as well as they're dealing with your idiosyncrasies. But you don't always get the time to visit, you know, so it was kind of nice after the service, you know, for my wife and I to visit. Hey, honey, what'd you get out of the service? You know, what's that? What did you get? You know, I know what I got. I got blessed. I was like, ah, you know, she knows me. I'm like, ah. No, I'm not one of those Pentecostal rat and raving, rolling on the floor, dog, dog style, you know, kind of barking, you know, with tag, tongue wagging and, you know, tail, wag, tail wagging and tongue dragging or whatever you want to call it. And I'm not one of those, like, you know, just because I've got all the gifts, I believe, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you know, doesn't mean that I run around ex exercising them. I don't know, you know. I, you, you know, and say some language, you know, prayer language or whatever, gift of tongues. But the point is, so what? There's a time and a place for all those things. And the way I was trained is sometimes it's not the time and certainly not the place. But visiting with my wife, it was so good to see that she too had seen and experienced and enjoyed things that were there. Oh, she shivers a little bit from the you know air conditioning. <laughs> but hey, nobody's perfect. But my point is this. She and I learned and were encouraged and were challenged. I mean, challenged, you know, challenged. We're in the ministry every day. I mean, come on, what kind of challenge do we face? We're already challenged. But the point is, we were stretched forward in our understanding, encouraged to expand our appreciation of who God is, how he is, and how he works. You know, especially Jesus in the way that he does it through his people and through people, individuals. Because when you can actually see someone else the way the Lord sees them, you begin to enjoy both parts of them. The part that is God, obviously, living in them, and the part that is them being changed into the image of his son. There's kind of a, a schizophrenia going on, you know, kind of a two-part thing. Not good and evil, but just good and better, you know, or better in God, you know, I mean, whichever way I want to look at it. But you kind of know when it's like, wow, that was awesome. 
you know, and and the message that we were given was so cool. I just was like, man, I walked away grinning. But you know, the thing I wanted to bring out that I wanted to ask you, you know, because of the type of person I am. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed this on video, but I like to laugh. You know? Now, I don't mean laugh at you. I don't mean laugh with you or whatever you want to call it. I just mean some good old, uh, if you got a belly, I don't have one, good old belly laugh, you know, just something hits you deep inside and you just, <laughs> you just get a kick out of it. You ever get that way? No? Well, you know, maybe you should check around. Maybe you should look around. Maybe you should be found by God looking for a place that you could laugh a lot. You know, like LOL on the internet or rolling on the floor laughing. You know, maybe not quite that bad, but some place that you could enjoy more so the church you're a part of and the life you're living than just be joy led or somehow trying to find joy or to enjoy without being joy filled but just joyful because you see joyful is kind of like one of those things that you kind of get it for a little while you know but if you're a little tiny teacup you know I'm a little teacup here's my thing and here's my spout you know and it's just kind of like you can only be filled up so much I'm a teacup but no a teacup is only like this high you know what I mean you don't know what I mean okay teacup can only hold, let's say, four ounces or six ounces. Well, to fill up that teacup, you put in six ounces. And if you put in six ounces and one-tenth, it overflows. Well, joyful would be kind of like right at the brim. You know, you're right at the edge. You know, you're just right up there. You, you don't have any more capacity to be filled, but you're joyful. Now, when you're joy-filled, in my personal opinion, this is kind of like a interpretation kind of thing, so you could take it to the bank or leave it or do whatever you want to do with it. When you're joy-filled, I think you're overflowing with joy. I think that's the kind of joy that God was talking about when he said, be filled with the Spirit of God to overflowing, you know, so that you would be joy-filled. Or, the way I like to say, when you just can't take it anymore, <laughs> you just got to laugh about it. You know, it just... Just comes bubbling out. It's kind of like artesian, you know? That to me is the joy of the Lord. That to me is a real strength of God. That to me is something that I enjoy. Now, maybe you don't know how to laugh. I don't know. Maybe you don't know how to be less serious. And church is a serious subject. But, you know, my mother, she's dead. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> she's out of here, man. She's home. <laughs> oh, that was cruel of me? God forbid. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Boy, I must not be a very honorable son. <laughs> Firstborn. Oh, maybe I'm one of those bastard kids. I guess I was. Oh, well. Shucks. I thought I was an honorable one. But my point is, my mother, and I don't mean God rest her soul because she's probably busy in heaven doing her thing, you know. And my mother, whenever she was in church, wherever she was at, no matter where she was at, you always knew she was there because sooner or later, somebody would say something silly in a message or in a sermon or in a teaching or wherever she was at in church, and she'd laugh. Uh, that was okay, sort of, except she was only like maybe, you know, four foot eleven, you know, and she was like kind of skinny, you know, one of those truck stop waitresses, but that woman knew how to laugh. As a matter of fact, my whole family has this kind of like belly laugh that we just, we like to hide it, <laughs> you know, wherever we go, <laughs> you know, and my sister, she goes, <laughs> you know, she doesn't really know how to laugh, poor kid, but me, being the firstborn, I've got all the inheritance. I got all the genes, you know. Blue jeans, green jeans, gray jeans. Well, you get it. I've got the laughter bug. You know, no, I'm kidding. It's not a bug. But having been 
likewise around her, you know, I was influenced by her laughter and I never was told to hold back, you know, enjoying what struck me as funny. And, you know, I know how to laugh a little bit or laugh, you know, the corny way or laugh the, you know, polite way. <laughs> but in the service today, I laughed. It was funny. I enjoyed it. You could feel the Lord. You know, God was there. It was like, oh, gosh, God, you know, we could just walk into heaven, almost. And, you know, that's the way it should be. You should learn how to laugh. You should learn how to enjoy. You should learn how to rejoice. Not just in worship, but in times of teaching, in times of struggle, in times of even, dare I say, suffering. Well, you see, the reason why I say that is because nobody there knew my back was out. Although, you know, somebody that might have been behind me might have watched me get up from the chair like, real, oh boy, and if they saw my face, they'd have gone, wow, that guy's in pain. Not really, because I was grinning. I was too busy grinning with the message. But you see, the pain was there, but the laughter, wow. The joy of the Lord's our strength. Man, you know, you just got to learn how to laugh. If you haven't really learned how to laugh at church, you're really not going to make it in life. You're going to find that you're going to take some things too serious, that they're going to overwhelm you with your religious ideas as opposed to giving and yielding to the Spirit of God as He wants to move you into personal intimacy and fellowship with Himself. You see, that's what it's always been about is having, not getting, but having a personal relationship intercommunicative ability to talk to God and God to relate to you in a personal way through Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our God, and quite frankly, not too bad, not too shabby a guy after all, you know. I mean, he's kind of cool, you know, once you get to know him. You know, <laughs> of course, he'll relate to you wherever you're at, you know, and he'll take you beyond your comprehension of him to a better understanding of his Father as well as himself because that's what he came to do. This is eternal life, that they should know you and know him whom you have sent. It was kind of what the message of the pastor was about, but he was talking about following Jesus, you know, and being behind him, you know. I like the idea of him being in me, but, you know, behind him, I got him. I get the message, you know, I got the point, you know, I get the, I get the gist. But I enjoyed it so much that I just was laughing, and I wanted to share that with you, that maybe... Maybe your life is pretty upside down or sideways. Maybe you are getting stomped on and romped on by your own emotions at one end of the spectrum and the emotions of others at the other that are trying to rob your joy or steal your joy or rob your peace or steal your peace or do something to you that you don't want. Can I say something that might make sense? Maybe, maybe if you tried laughing about it a little more, and not thinking about it, and thinking about it a little less, and trusting a whole lot more, like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you might be able to kind of get to the place of maybe chuckling a little bit. Because isn't it kind of dumb, really, to get all wrapped up on the things of this world when they're passing away, when we're going to live in eternity forever and ever and ever? Then what am I worried about? <laughs> That's what's actually kind of funny. What are we worried about when we're guaranteed eternity? Until your heart sings. By the way, if you look up in the right-hand corner, you might be able to see the hummingbird. I can tell that he's humming and he's sucking away at some of the sugar water. Until your heart sings, I am beside you to bless and help you. Waver not in your prayers. They shall be heard. All power is mine. Say that to yourself often and steadily. Say it until your heart sings with the joy of the safety and power it means to you. Say it until the very force of the utterance drives back and puts to naught all the evils against you. Not because you profess it or confess it, but because it reminds you of who God is and who you are. Use it as a battle cry. All power is given unto my Lord. All power is given unto Jesus. Jesus can do it all. Jesus will save me. Jesus is Lord of all. Now I've been kind of waiting for my little hummingbird to come back. Because you see, a lot of times when I do the right thing, at the right time, in the right place, 
with the right attitude. And we'll just say it's right. Guess who shows up? <laughs> Coinkadink. Maybe we aren't going to get too carried away about some of these things. I wouldn't want somebody to think it's a dogma or a doctrine. But you know, when I see these little hummingbirds come by, it just blesses my socks off. And it makes me think about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And then it makes me joyful. Be filled with joy. Learn to walk in the fullness of His Spirit. And He will fill you to overflowing. And maybe, just maybe, you'll learn how to laugh. <laughs>